Hello and welcome back to the Frame Channel. It probably won't surprise you to learn that cotton is the world's most popular natural fiber for clothing. But did you know that the United States alone supplies about 35% of global cotton exports? In this feature, we'll take a look inside the country's gigantic farms and the processes applied to produce millions of bales of cotton each year. These fluffy, cloud-like heads from cotton plants, known as cotton balls, are used to create the natural textile material we all recognize. As these plants thrive in warm, dry conditions, the majority of cotton farms can be found in the southern region of the U.S., known as the Cotton Belt. Seeds are usually planted in the springtime and sown row by row over hundreds of acres of farmland. So mechanical planting machines are used to ensure they are deposited evenly across these vast areas. Rotary seed planters combine cultivation procedures such as plowing, seed sowing, and earth rolling to speed up this process. Approximately 160 days later, the plants will have developed wispy white cotton balls, meaning they are ready for harvesting. Cotton harvesting machines, capable of separating these balls from the plants, are employed during this stage, allowing thousands of the fibrous orbs to be gathered for processing. The row units in the cotton picker machine, otherwise called heads, are responsible for all of the work. The yellow spouts on the machine pick up the low-hanging branches and guide them into the head where two spinning drums which are positioned to separate the cotton from the branches. Each head has two spinning drums fitted with bars which hold rotating steel fingers with barbs known as spindles. The front drums have 16 bars with 20 spindles on each bar while the rear drums have 12 bars with 20 spindles on each bar. The drums turn at extremely high speeds to enable the spindles to rip the cotton from the twigs. Strong blasts of air are used to blow the cotton through the harvesting machines, collecting it in a hopper located at the rear of the vehicle. Gathering the cotton is one thing, but transporting it is quite another. Can you imagine trying to carry all of those flyaway feathery balls from one place to the next? So, before the cotton can be moved, specialized module building systems are used to transform the harvested material into huge rolls known as modules. These machines condense the loose material into regular sized portions, which can be stored safely and transported easily. The harvested material is tipped into the module baskets, from where it is compacted, rolled, and wrapped to form a massive cylinder. Some of the latest harvesters even boast their own module building functionality, meaning only one machine is needed for both stages of the process. In whatever form, module building is essentially packaging on an industrial scale. With each cotton module weighing between 4,500 and 5,500 pounds. The module builders then wrap the cylinders in plastic coating to provide further protection. To maintain the integrity of the material inside, each cotton module is handled with extreme care to prevent its plastic jacket from being ripped during transportation. Farmers must therefore very carefully consider machinery speeds and module placement, or staging. Even minor misalignments or inconsistencies between modules, even while they are preserved in open air, can affect the process. Of course, no process is completely effective, and cotton modules will inevitably become damaged on occasion. Next, the modules are transported to a facility known as a cotton gin. 
At these facilities, each roll is unwrapped by module feeder machinery. It is then sent to a cylinder cleaning machine, which removes dirt and debris such as cotton stems or superfluous material collected accidentally during harvesting. Once free of these fragments, the cotton is transported to the ginning machine, where seeds are removed from the lint. The seeds are either sent away for planting or used as animal feed, depending on their quality. The separated lint is cleaned before being condensed into bales and grated. The resultant cotton bales can then be shipped to a cotton mill, where they will be transformed into the different fabrics we all know and love. One of the many applications for which baled cotton can be used is to produce jeans. With the global denim market valued at approximately $21.8 billion in 2020, these familiar garments can be found in wardrobes the world over. To make jeans, cotton fibers are removed from the bales before being carded, spun into yarn, and dyed. This material is then woven onto a loom to form the heavy cotton commonly known as denim. This strong and durable cloth must be cut precisely to form panels, which are sewn together to become fashion jeans. A variety of treatments, such as stone washing and pre-washing, can also be applied to achieve the desired appearance and level of softness. A similar process, with slight variation, is applied when producing other clothing types, towels, bed sheets, and even book covers. These diverse uses of cotton have kept the production and marketing of the fluffy fiber blooming. Cotton is measured and marketed in massive bales weighing 480 pounds each. In 2020, America alone produced 20 million bales of cotton and exported around 15.6 million bales. In the same year, despite the setbacks of the COVID-19 pandemic, the global supply of cotton, including stocks, stood at almost 220 million bales. That's the end of this feature on the frame. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to catch us on our next video. See you next time.